Alright, you guys, welcome back to History 125. This is Lecture 15, The Plague. This is on the Black Death in Europe. And before we even start, I just want to make a note that this is not historically accurate to the 1300s. This idea of a plague doctor that's really popular in, like, cosplay, and I feel like it's in Bloodborne, too, if anyone's ever played Bloodborne. It's cool, but it's from France in the 1600s. It even says it down here, 1656. This is not from the Black Plague, but I think it's really cool. So we're going to have it there. I hope that you guys watch this video. I had you watching it before our lecture, but I feel like the only way to know to watch this is to start our lecture. <laughs> so you can either start this and watch part of it now or keep going with my lecture and watch it later. But... This is really important, and it will be on our quiz. Okay, moving on, though. The origins of the Black Plague is, comes from the 1300s, 1347. And there's this area called Kaffa near the Black Sea. And the Black Sea, let me get our little map really quick here from last class. Okay, ignore everything on this map because this is from the 500s. But... Kaffa is, like, right here by the Black Sea. So when there was Mongols coming into Italy when Rome fell, they would come from, like, up here at the corner of my screen down. This is where the Mongol Empire was, like, way over here by Russia. And so the Black Sea is kind of a strategic place, and a lot of, like, different cultures meet here. We have the West meets here, the Middle East, Asia Minor, and then the Mongols. So... Oops, we're still on Justinian here. All right. So the Mongol army from the east are called the Tartars, and they come to Kaffa, and they're battling, right, to get control of this area. But the crew members are sick, and the crew members start dying. And what's really interesting and so disgusting is that the Mongols put the bodies on catapults and throw them into the city. This is our first, like, biological warfare. These people know that every, like, they know that these bodies are sick and contaminated and they throw them into the city. So you'd be walking around Kaffa and it would be raining, disgusting corpses. Isn't that kind of cool? In a gross way. <laughs> It was really disgusting, <laughs> as you can imagine. And the plague starts from essentially rats on the boats. They don't start from rats. The rats have fleas on them, and the fleas are infected. Okay, so the fleas are inf infected, but they're on the rats, and the rats go into the cities and the boats and stuff. So, unfortunately, it spread really quick because of trade back then. A lot of the trade was on boats or these big caravans. And so the rats would, like, follow people. And so they'd follow them onto the boat or they'd even follow them when they were running away. Some people in Kaffa were like, oh, my God, disgusting bodies raining from the sky. I'm out. But then rats would just follow them, too. And then they actually spread it. Okay, which brings us to spreading. So like I said, there was a main panic right away. And people started leaving Kaffa. They were like, I'm out, GTFO. But they didn't realize that they were bringing the rats and the fleas along with them. Back then, fleas were like not a big thing. I'm sorry, they were a big thing, but they weren't a big deal. <laughs> so it to have like fleas on your clothes was like, like getting mosquito bites to us. It'd be like, oh, whatever. It's just part of the summer. Mosquito bites. People be like, oh, that's just part of living is having fleas on your crap. So people start to run away and it spreads. I don't want to make a whole bunch of connections to COVID during this. <laughs> but you got to kind of think about how like COVID started to come through like these big areas of um like transportation, like it would go to big cities like LA and New York City. And then everyone in New York City was like, oh crap, I want to leave. I want to go up to my like cabin in the Adirondacks. And then they just brought it with them. 
that's what happened then too. <laughs> this map is kind of small. Let's see if I, it, kind, it distorts it, but this is Kaffa over here. Kaffa can be spelled with a C or a K too, it just depends. Um, I was wrong the first time I pointed to it. It's like the north of the Black Sea. But anyway, it went from Kaffa to Constantinople and then spreads all around. Like Constantinople was such a strategic place. And it gets to Italy and it gets to um, France and England and, you know. Okay. Just like I said before, there was a layer of filth on everything. In the Middle Ages, it was filthy. Like it was just disgusting. If you were in a house, or even just like a little, like if you were in the city, like a, living above your shop or whatever, people would just dump garbage into the streets, or what they called night soil. So during the night, you don't want to go out to like a porter potty because it's dark and everything. So you would poop in a bucket, or pee in a bucket, and then you would just throw it out the window in the morning. <laughs> You would just, like, yeet <laughs> your, like, poop out the window. <laughs> and that's what caused the plague. <laughs> um, these infected fleas would infect people, and then the people, you know, similar to COVID, like, if you're sick and you cough, then, like, you're spreading it, you know? Okay, anyway. There was also this issue of Easter and hand washing. Hand washing was not a thing, Okay. And around the time of Easter, everyone was, like, congregating, and everyone was getting together, and it started to spread really fast. The next is ignorance, which we can't relate to at all with COVID, right? Everyone is smart and makes smart decisions with COVID, obviously, huh? Anyway, people thought that it was in the air, and so they closed the cities. Like, people thought that it was the air, and so they locked everything down. And then guess what? Where do the rats go when everything's locked down? Like, it spreads so much faster. Other people thought that it was sin. And so they went to monasteries to try to help. But then in the monasteries, they'd all be sick. And then the infected would, like, beat down doors and get into monasteries. Because they wanted, like, one, to be cured by God. And two... They wanted their, like, last rites. You know, remember we talked about indulgences? People wanted to get their, like, last indulgence before they died. And so they're sick and they're going into these monasteries. And then the people from the monasteries are going to help other people. And it just spreads and spreads. You know how it is. Another way that it spread, which ties into the ignorance about the monasteries, is faith. So monks and citizens thought they got it because of sin. So they would do something called self-flagellation and they would do it publicly. So let me explain. A group of monks, men, would just wear like robes from the bottom and they would have no shirt on. And they had these sticks here that were tied with leather strips that had knots on the end. And they would flick themselves in the back while walking along the street. Anyone with long hair ever get your hair wet and then you like try to get the water out. So you like bend down and you flick your hair back or like at the pool or anything. And, and the water like goes flying. Um, well, it's disgusting, but imagine that with blood. <laughs> so these people not only were creating open wounds to get themselves infected, but if there's blood on the end of these things, after they hit themselves, they fling it back out and they literally fling blood into the crowds of people watching. And this is in the video. That's why I want you to watch the video. What the, what the plague really was, was not about a sin. <laughs> it was an infection of your lymph nodes, which is like your armpits, essentially. And there would be these, like... So I, I hate to talk about this. It's so gross. But there would be these huge welts that would like... So bubonic comes from the word bobus, which means like a giant like boil that is disgusting. And so your armpits would like... Your armpits and like crotch area, that's where your lymph nodes are, would spread... Like would get this giant 
like welt and then it would explode with blood and pus. Blech. Disgusting. There was actually three plagues too. That was the first one, the bubonic plague. The next is the pneumonic plague, which is a lung infection, which would actually liquefy your lungs. So your last days, and keep in mind, some people did live, but like your last days would be your lungs turning to like bloody pulp. Oh, that's so gross. Oh, I hate talking about this. It's really gross. Um, but the last one is the septemic plague, which is a blood infection. And it would cause this like purple and black skin because there'd be no oxygen. So we call it the Black Plague or the Black Death. A lot of reasons because black being like the op like dark being like the opposite of light, like the dark ages. And also because of this black, like the blackening of the skin and stuff. Like I said, there was three. So it all kind of happened around the same time. So you might have the bubonic plague, but like your neighbor could have the pneumonic plague. It was not a good situation. <laughs> um, because I want you guys to watch the video, I just want to sh go over a couple of long-term effects, but then I want you to watch the video. So the first is that it could kill anyone and everyone. Meaning you, a pope could die. A king could die. You didn't have to be a good person or a bad person to die. You know, remember the beginning of COVID when there was like so much racism towards Asian people because um, it came from an area of China to America? Granted, it was all over the world, whatever. But in the beginning, people were like, well, I'm not going to get it. I didn't come into contact with, like, other people. Other meaning, like, the otherness of, like, people of color. But eventually, it was just like, well, anyone could get it. It doesn't matter what you look like or whatever. That's what happened then, too. Anyone could get it. And some really famous people died, like, famous, like, lords and ladies and stuff. So it traveled fast around Europe that you didn't have to be any type of person. Anyone could get it. This caused a lack of religiosity. So people stopped believing in God. They were like, my dad has been a pious man. My mom has been a pious woman. She remained a virgin until marriage and she died. Like, you don't have to be a good person to die. And so there was a lack of believing in, in religion. Um, royalty was really vulnerable. And so they couldn't help. And people started to feel like, why do I respect my king if he can't help? Like, think about how much even more respect some people have lost to Donald Trump when, like, America is now the leading country for COVID. You just start to doubt your leaders when no, no one's helping. Um, and the interesting thing was indulgence couldn't help you live, but maybe they could help you get to heaven. So indulgences still kind of stayed around. But like I said... People wanted indulgence and would, like, break the doors down of people, of, like, the monasteries, and they would all get sick. Another long-term effect is that between one-third and two-thirds of Europe dies. That's a lot. <laughs> that's just, that's a lot. The next is there's a change in art. We get this kind of art called macabre, which is, like, dark, skeleton-y kind of whatever. And so... Here we have like a really stylized Satan and he's like stepping on this, this dying man. This would be macabre. It's just like skeletonies and devilly kind of people. Um, yeah, think of macabre as like goth. <laughs> That's how I think of it. The next is you show snails munching on people because like here's a knight fighting a snail because there'd be so many like dead bodies on the ground. They didn't know what to do with them. And so they would just be covered in, like, snails and maggots and stuff. It's gross. Obviously, there's also a lot of skeletons in art, too, because, like I said, there's corpses rotting everywhere. The one thing I do want to say is that Ring Around the Rosie, the little, like, you know, elementary school rhyme, is not from this time period. It's from the 1800s. So some people say, like, Ring Around the Rosie and the Plague Doctor, like, the bird mask. That's from, no, it's not from this time. The last thing that I want to talk about this week is the long-term effects on the economy. 
This was a pretty crappy time in history. The 1300s, also known as the 14th century, is probably the crappiest time in European history before, well, after, like, Rome falling, I guess. So right before the plague, there was a famine. And so when there's less, like, so a famine means there's not a lot of food. Okay, and this happened because of, like, weather and stuff. But a lot of farms died, and then people would die. So when there's less farms, there's less food, which means a higher price for food. So now, in addition to there being a famine, and in addition to there being the plague, the people that were living couldn't, they couldn't buy, like, bread at a decent price because the, like, wheat and stuff was such a high price because there was no farms. And this led to the breakdown of the feudal system and a peasant revolt in England because people were like, why am I being a serf and a peasant if I'm just going to die to the plague? <laughs> why should I have any faith in the king when all of my friends and family are dying? And with the peasant revolt, the peasants had to give, like, crops and stuff to, like, imagine these are the peasants. They had to give crops and stuff to the castle. So the peasants are like, I'm literally the only person left on my farm because everyone else has freaking died. And you want me to give you my wheat? You're out of your mind. So... The feudal system starts to break down, and there's just a big shift. And this is pretty much how the Middle Ages start to end. The Middle Ages end, and then from all of this craziness, we have the rebirth of Europe. And rebirth is just another name for the Renaissance, which we will be talking about next week. <laughs>